Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the debut album from Azealia Banks, titled Broke with Expensive Taste. Okay, normally when I get requests, they're pretty scattershot. I get a few for upcoming records that I'm obviously going to be covering because they're so big it'd be insane for me to ignore them. I get a few for offbeat oddities that I might check out if I find them interesting or I find the time. And of course, I get the requests for albums that came out two years ago and that weren't particularly well received even then. Now let me clarify something about my schedule. With every artist that I cover, I endeavor to assemble a full and fair picture. Picture, which means going back through all of their past discography in order to get some historical context. Which means in addition to covering the album and making sure to listen to it multiple times so I fully get it, I'm also backtracing through history, re-listening to all their discography, either for the first time or just to get back up to speed. In other words, there's a lot of time and work that goes into my schedule that you probably don't see, and I can't cover everything no matter how hard I try. And even my year-end catch-up of all the albums that I missed throughout this year, it won't manage to snag everything. And yet, when I get a wave of requests for one album where nearly the only comments on my recent videos are asking for this one specific debut record, I start taking notice. And the more they pour it in, the less they seem to make any sense. I mean, I've heard the name Azealia Banks before from a strong EP and mixtape that she dropped back in 2012, but since then, her buzz has been less from her music and more from feuds with fellow musicians like Angel Hayes and Bauer, and from some asinine remarks she's made at tabloid fixtures like Perez Hilton. It didn't help that there had apparently been label problems that led her to getting dropped from Universal, and this album getting delayed extensively. So with little to no promotion and following in the footsteps of her idol Beyonce, Azealia Banks released her debut album out of nowhere and I started getting the wave of requests to cover it. On the one hand, she probably couldn't have picked a better time. With the biggest charting names in rap music right now, at least in the mainstream, being Nicki Minaj, Nicki Azalea, this is a better time to be a woman in hip hop than it has been in a long time. On the other hand, I wasn't exactly sure what I was stepping into with Broke with Expensive Taste. And I remember what happened with Angel Hayes' Dirty Gold very earlier this year when it leaked. A record that really was a complete non-starter, even though it did have songs with real commercial appeal. So I wasn't sure what Azealia Banks was going to be delivering here. So what do we get? Honestly, uh, not a lot. The more I've listened through this album, the less I understood why anybody really wanted me to cover it. Because while this might be an interesting release with a sheer clash of genre and styles that Azealia Banks includes in this album, flying in the face of any sort of cohesive sound, Broke With Expensive Taste did not grip me at all. I'm not sure what I was really expecting from this outside of a pop flavored hip hop release that reportedly had elements of house music. In other words, I was not expecting anything lyrical or deep, but even with those expectations are placed in comparison with other pop rap albums I've reviewed thus far this year, this record just fell completely flat for me. I'm not saying it's bad, it's definitely passable, and I completely get why some people might like it and want me to review it, but I've definitely heard better albums than this this year, even in the mainstream and even in hip hop. And what blows my mind is that so many critics have praised this album as original in a supposedly dull year, when really the biggest innovations that this album brought Rings, is complete tonal inconsistency, explicit lyricism, and Azealia Banks rapping over some icier house beats in production, most of which you can trace directly back to the dance scene in the mid to late 90s. In fact, for as much as the production is being cited as innovative and creative, I cannot be nearly as complimentary. Now that's not saying that there aren't some moments that do have some color that I did like. Once Idol Delilah finally gets going, the percussion did have some texture and the guitar leads in the back of the mix, they were a nice touch. Give me a chance at an old school, grimy, bass heavy vibe punctuated with a good horn melody that I really enjoyed. Wallace had some explosive drum progressions that were pretty damn solid. Ice Princess did a lot to intensify that frigid vibe with the xylophone and the trap beat. Young Rapunzel had a choppy, eerie sound that kind of worked with the lo-fi screamed chorus. And the Ariel Pink collaboration, Nude Beach A Go-Go, tried to go for something of a surf rock vibe that really reminded me that I could be listening to the Alves debut album again and having a lot more fun. Because most of this album falls towards very typical, very polished house music with occasional trap influences that are rarely as dark or as interesting or as experimental as they could have been. Mostly because the melody lines are so bare bones and minimal and are much more concerned with cutting to a dance rhythm than any sort of potent punchy hook or any sort of good melody line. That did bug me. Now, to be fair, I probably like the production most out of anything on this album because for what it's trying to do, it fits. It's crisp, it's glossy, it's got the icy sort of glamour that Lady Gaga loves to cultivate with just enough of a gothic undertone to add a veneer of darkness. But for as much as this album would like to be affiliated with the term witch house in terms of its image and its style, it's a connection for me that feels painfully thin. It reminds me more of the little of the progression of the goth scene across the 80s and early 90s where the melancholy tones were just subverted and eventually replaced altogether 
together with a dance vibe when it crossed over with the rave scene. Broke with expensive taste feels like the hip-hop culmination of very similar trends, and to a certain extent, it feels really watered down, especially when we get to the lyrical subject matter. Now, as I said, I was not expecting much at all here. This is pop rap that's primarily concerned with dance. You're not getting any substance. And to her credit, there are moments where Azealia Banks does bring some real flavor. Most of her songs fall into traditional luxury rap, but her bisexuality and very explicit language can bring out some lyrics that do have some visceral punch, and she carries herself with enough ego and confidence that you can buy into her material. And there are songs like Ice Princess that shows some kind of creativity to take some of the witch imagery that she's very fond of and fuse it with a very different approach. Or when she drops into Spanish, a different language on Give Me a Chance to add some greater flavor. I dug that. But let's be honest here. In terms of content, this record does not do a lot beyond brand names and luxury rap references, swaggering hookup jams, and the same sort of brash, in-your-face songwriting you find from most rappers in the genre, male or female. Sure, she's frequently explicit in her sexual references, but with so many of the beats falling into this very chilly house vibe, I'm placed more in the mindset of high-end downtown clubs in Toronto, where people throw around a lot of money and flaunt sexuality for cheap provocation, but there's little underneath it. It's a provocative pose, but it's a pose. Say what you will about how filthy the Run the Jewels and Gangsta Boot collaboration Love Again, Acting Y'all Back was. The sleaze and the grime there, it felt fully realized. I bought it. Here, for as scattershot as this album is trying to be, it can't help but feel very calculated in some of its content. And that's not because of the wordplay. I'll give Azealia Banks this. She's a damn impressive lyricist in terms of structuring a multi-syllabic rhyme scheme and flow. And while her frequent interjection of half-formed words and sounds varies between workable and occasionally pretty sloppy, it did add enough of an organic element to really keep the momentum, which is quintessential for this sort of dance music. This album does have a lot of momentum, but my biggest issue with this record comes with her delivery. Not that she isn't a competent MC behind the microphone, but I get so little flavor or investment or real emotion from her, which flies completely in the face of how explicit her lyrics can get. Say what you will about how stupid Nicki Minaj's lyrics can get, or how Iggy Azalea's delivery can be smugly arrogant or even outright offensive, and how she co-ops a southern accent in order to spit her lines, but they at least have raw presence and real fire behind the microphone. You can tell they care. But when you have a beat like the hollow metallic halm that opens up with a chainsaw on heavy metal and reflective, where you'd expect Azealia Banks to deliver her rhymes with more raw energy and power, her detachment just really hurts this album. Especially when she opts for a more melodic flow that demands more investment and that Dessa does significantly better. Now don't get me wrong. I understand her persona, icy, detached, impeccably composed, and most of her rhyming style and ability calls back to that. But if you want to rap over production this heavy, you need to be able to match it in presence and style. And it's very telling that when Azealia Banks does open up and when she does scream, it's beneath the lo-fi fuzz and set near the back of the mix. In other words, nobody wanted to hear it because they didn't want to get that experimental. So at the end of the day, look, I know this record probably isn't for me. It's an album full of icy dance tracks with a hip-hop undercurrent that will probably play incredibly well in some nice upscale nightclubs, but by the standards of pop rap, this does very little for me. Azealia Banks' persona hasn't risen above a more explicit version of what many female rappers in the mainstream already do, and coupled with shallow content, wordplay that's well-structured but rarely rising above cliche, and beats that feel crib from a half dozen eras of hip-hop and house music, and never feeling all that cohesive, yeah, I'm sorry, this didn't work for me. For me, it's a light six, and keep in mind, that if you're more in the audience for this brand of dance-flavored pop rap, you'll probably like it a lot better. Otherwise, I get why there's a lot of hype behind Celia Banks right now, but honestly, I don't see it lasting. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. What do you guys think of this album? Do you guys think it really gripped you? Did the lack of cohesion bother you at all? Because I've heard a lot of positive remarks coming from this record, so I'm just curious what you have to think. Um, if there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, or any other albums coming out that you want me to take a look at, I'm all ears. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.